How's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to one of the mods you have to play before Total War Three Kingdoms comes out in the next couple months because my god, going back to this mod I realise how awesome Medieval 2 actually is. So this is a mod obviously for Medieval 2 Total War which takes place in the rise of the Three Kingdoms and it just does some really really amazing stuff. It also has just recently been updated which is crazy to think that a mod that is what like 7 years old is still being updated by dedicated modders and really just shows why medieval 2 is considered by most people one of the best total wars because of the amazing stuff that modders do do to the game and obviously to the fact that medieval 2 is just a great game in general so yes this is set in the year 194 ad however you do also have a few alternative reality uh, alternative history scenarios as well you can play by selecting certain warlords who maybe weren't around at that certain point like the Imperial Hand, you're going to kind of bring it back to its glory and um, without it being ruined. And now, I don't know a whole ton about the Free Kingdom era, I am obviously learning it bit by bit. So, you know, if you guys want to educate me by anything I get wrong, feel free to do so in the comments. I'm always interested to learn more and more as we do get closer to 3K. I'm currently listening to some podcasts as well, which will hopefully help out. But in this video, what the plan is is just to jump in as maybe Sao Sao or Lu Bei and basically just you know run through why this mod is as awesome as it is and why you should download it because it has some really really cool features it has some awesome uh, custom missions that a few of these warlords have you know more of the main featured ones like Lu Bay and Sao Sao and we can also jump into some battles because the custom settlements are also really, really cool. Um, so yeah, I thought we'd just jump in as Sao Sao and have some fun and do, do what I just said. Um, you can also play a whole range of different warlords, you know, some more notable ones, um, which maybe aren't the main three. Um, and then you have some other side ones, which maybe you don't know too much about. You can read all about their history and stuff, which is very cool. But you know, this is one of the reasons I love Medieval 2 is just the mod ability. Look at, I mean, just look at this screen right now. I don't think many other mods have have a screen like this where you can just select a really really impressive work and the fact that they're still updating it is even more impressive so let's jump in as Sal Sal I will make sure to leave a link down below for you guys so you can check out the mod for yourself as well as check out how to install it because it's not very hard to install all you have to do is just download everything use the installer download it to the right path and it, it should be pretty good but I'll make sure to link a video down below if any of you are having troubles because obviously medieval 2 does not have a workshop on steam so it's not as easy as just clicking subscribe you have to do a little bit of the uh, the old school methods of you know dragging stuff into data folders but yeah it's honestly not that difficult so let's load into the game and we will see how the campaign map is looking Okay guys, so we are now immediately into the campaign. You get a few scripts that run at the beginning of these mods, which is just so awesome. Again, having these custom scripts like the missions just adds so much flavor to what would normally be, you know, a, a kind of sandboxy game. You actually have some direction, which some people like and some people don't. But the nice thing is about these scripts is you can turn them on or off. So you have the ability to go ahead and uh, you know, create assassins if you want people to be assassinating one another, or if you just want to turn that off and just go for a nice, you know, campaign without them. Uh, you also have like a nice little limit here for spies so you actually have diplomats you have to send to people which is kind of an old school mechanic but I kind of miss that from medieval you know actually having to send your emissaries off to people to talk to them rather than just having kind of this magic telephone um, I mean we'll just say no for now so then we also have cow cows uh, or the cow the sow sorry I don't want to say poo in Chinese uh, the sow ambition which is basically you know running through his what he actually did in history and you have to try and kind of create that path yourself and one of the cool things is if you want to do that you can cl cl click it on which we're going to do. However, you can also just say no and say you don't want to go ahead and complete that mission. And this is one of the missions. And I think one of the awesome things about this mod is it actually runs through your objectives here. So you can see what you need to control. But if you're also very unfamiliar with where these places are, which I am, I have no idea. You can go ahead and ask them to show you them, which will then just go ahead and take you on a little thing. And it will just basically pinpoint the settlements you need to take, which again, is a small addition to it. But I think it adds so much. It really gives you an idea of okay this is where my opening missions are these are the settlements i need to try and hold and these are the settlements i need to you know push my dominance into and secure to complete my mission and then i'll get another one so it's like its own little story and i really really do dig that in medieval 2 
Um, also, Sasa starts off pretty goddamn strong at the beginning of the game. He has a whole ton of armies. I mean, just look at all of these guys. It's kind of crazy how many, you know, soldiers and armies he does have. I'm sure in Free Kingdoms, he won't be kind of gifted with this many men because it is kind of crazy. Okay, so one of the really, really awesome things about Medieval 2 Total War, which is something that we have seen teases of in the actual uh, Free Kingdoms Total War, is population. However, I feel like it's not going to work as cleanly as it is in Medieval 2. Obviously, every settlement does have its own population, and when you recruit troops, it does draw from that population, which is just a really, really cool feature and something I love, and I really hope they bring back in more of a you know an epic style than what we're seeing so far in Free Kingdoms. But again, we haven't seen too much. Um, so yeah, in the beginning of the campaign, obviously you start off with a pretty nice empire. I mean, I imagine Sao Sao is going to have a really good easy start of things with all of these armies. You've got a whole range of characters which you can really develop. And one of the amazing things about Medieval 2 is you have this really cool loyalty system. In the mod as well, you have your own kind of strengths and leadership and stuff in each of these. You know, you can read a bit more about them and really get under them. So I love the way they've kind of addressed these heroes so they can get better, not only with their command, honor, and loyalty, um, but also, you know, with their actual strengths themselves. So, you know, certain characters will have better leadership, which will give his unit a bit more and also add certain stuff to it. So, yeah, I think this is a really, really nice job by the modders to, to create these unique traits. And as you can see, there is a lot of them. So if you really want to dive deep into the, like, stats of every single unit and stuff, I think that's a very, very cool way to do. So our man, all right, here we have a nice little army. And I guess we'll probably head northward to maybe siege one of these towns towns up here um, because I think this will provide us with probably one of the cooler battles. Let's do so. Let's merge up our army with one of our other leaders and just keep heading northwards. One of the awesome things I want to show you guys really quickly is the map itself. The campaign map has a wonderful array of, you know, different biomes and combat areas and passes and mountains and rivers, which I think really, really go ahead and make this map as exciting as it can be. You have loads of different factions all conquering around the world, all in these different areas with certain terrain covering them up. You have these awesome rice fields on the campaign map, dense forests. So it, it really does become, you know, an interesting, uh, place to really plan out your strategic campaigns and decide where you want to go ahead because like I imagine attacking down somewhere in you know, the far south of China is going to be very very different than fighting in the, the dense mountains right here or fighting in the open land right here is this supposed to be the gray yeah part of the great wall I guess um, and then you know you other have other situations where there's lots of forests and more of the great wall you have to try and traverse around so is there just a really really impressive campaign map which I think gives you so much to do you also have these special past battles which as I said we're going to go ahead and dive into um, and see what they're all about because I think they're very very exciting but even just, you know, the small opportunities of trying to traverse these rivers, because as I said, you have to go to these fours, which gives you perfect opportunities to defend against the AI and prevent them from crossing. And you can really, you know, set up you know, your defensive choke points to, to funnel the enemy armies in and to really try and stuff you off. Also, you can see on the campaign map itself, you can see all the different factions. And um, you obviously got Liu Bei down here with all of his, his three or two, his two brothers, one's there, I don't know where the other one is. And that's another thing as well, the custom models for the, the important heroes are also on so obviously you can see Sal Sal right there if we do turn him around uh, you obviously have Lu Bu you have obviously uh, some of um, yeah a few there you go there's another one right there and Lu Bei is Guan Yu. I don't know where Lu Bei is right now. But again, you can see that there are a lot of really cool custom models, even on the campaign map, which will go ahead and add a load of stuff into the, I think, the experience of playing this mod. Not only that, you also have an awesome array of buildings as well to choose from. This is, again, kind of when you could build a ton of buildings to really diversify your kingdom. And I love the artwork they've managed to gather for this. It really gives a feel of what the building is itself, what's it going to give you and it's just nice and really simple you know it's nothing too crazy which is something I quite dig so another thing that is really, really cool about this mod is the supply system. So you do actually have supplies in your army and you have to keep a good eye on that. So if we take a look at one of my sieging armies, we are actually only supplied. Now last turn, this was fully supplied, which gave us, you know, much many more bonuses and allowed us to go ahead and keep on moving into enemy territory. So again, having supply is really, really cool. You also have to worry about the winter seasons and you can see right now that because it's winter, it is currently giving us minus 15 morale 
out and then you even have um you know certain abilities you know what is he really really good at certain stuff so he has a degree of mastery in his uh you know his basic right here in courage and iron will so there's a really good emphasis on characters in this mod which i feel like is a, again a great way to get you ready for free kingdoms when that comes out which is seemingly all about characters so we have a really cool battle right here which we're going to dive into next turn uh, it's, it's basically one of the pass battles which is kind of like a fortified position which guards mountain passes into certain areas so this will be quite fun to, to dive in and to do as well as that Lu Bu is currently facing off against Sal Sal which I thought was kind of funny so maybe I'll fight this one out and bring you guys the highlights of it because you know he's obviously going to be an extremely fierce warrior um, and by you can see right that his authority is massive his command is really really big and I imagine he has a whole range of really really good traits so yeah let's dive in and fight him I'll bring you guys the highlights and we'll see how we fare against this mighty warrior so one of the things I want to point off right off the bat as we dive into battle against Lubu is not only the awesome look of the units themselves, you know, for a game that is, what, 10 years old now, I think the modders have done an amazing job at creating really, really good looking models. Um, yeah, definitely props to them. And you have a whole range of units in your armies, you know, from peasant conscripts to more of these country militia and then to some imperial hand units as well. So you really get kind of the feel and the upgrade of units that, you know, this is not just, you know, one elite army you have a whole range of units and obviously you can make more imperial units but i think they just look really good like that's an impressive work for a game that is as old as this you even have some really elite general units as well which aren't always mounted so you can see this general right to here back there he's obviously also on foot leading a pretty elite unit you also have custom models for your heroes which is always really impressive so you can see sal sal right here leading from the rear in his nice mastermind ways and i'm sure lu boo is also got his own custom model yeah he's looking extremely fierce like that i would not want to face this dude well unfortunately I'm gonna have to and you know his units again are gonna be looking different from mine uh, in some way or another you know you're gonna have these special units like this I'm not exactly sure what these guys are called but you have a whole range of really really you know different units that um, you know are kind of more well renowned you know special individual units leading on to certain commanders and stuff which is really really cool again to hound on that point for a game that is as old as medieval 2 i mean it does look pretty goddamn clean so this is just another reason why playing this mod is a necessity because you know it doesn't even feel that outdated with the sure look of the battles and let me tell you the siege battles as well are very very awesome you know we've definitely been starved of really good siege battles with warhammer 2 so you know to dive back into medieval 2 which i think most people would agree is the golden age of siege battles where you have these multi-layered fortresses which are really really exciting and yeah I, I am hoping that 3k will bring us back some you know more exciting siege battles because yeah we've definitely definitely been starved of really good ones I mean look at this cavalry as well some of the hand heavy shot cavalry right here it's gonna be deadly indeed as we move closer and closer towards loot boo So it seems like the cavalry is going to be charging at me. Let's go ahead and meet Lu Bu's horsemen in the field. We'll send off some of our hand light cavalry to engage against the hand light cavalry. Pretty nice impact. And then we'll reinforce the rest of our cavalry around the side right there. Over on the front line as well, you can see my archers falling back as they do charge. Yeah, we've got some of the awesome looking cavalry right here. Very, very deadly stuff. And I think maybe even having to throw in this unit of spearmen is going to be a great thing to, to do. So again, one of the really, really interesting things about these battles is it's not necessarily all about the units, right? A lot of the time it comes down to, as we get another awesome charge right there as these units clash, collide into one another. Yeah, it's not all about the units. A lot of the time it's about the skill of the commander. You know, like Lu Bu is going to be one a hell of a adversary to try and take down, which is why I'm going to be focusing all my missiles down on him and sending a unit around there and trying to come in here and kill this cavalry because it's not all about the the army composition if you have a better uh general that's going to provide you with really really good stats which will allow you to really push off and you know do a lot of damage to your opponent um you know heavy cavalry and as you guys know generals are very very strong in medieval uh, in medieval two total war and the fighting as well still does not look you know super outdated it's pretty impressive uh, we're actually going to go ahead and Oh, we actually have a special ability as well. Fire flaming arrows. 
I guess we'll apply that, which is pretty goddamn cool. As the cavalry fight does continue, Lu Bu moving around. Yeah, we're just trying to hammer him down and try and pick away at his units because, yeah, he's going to be a hard, uh, hard unit to try and kill. It seems like overall, though, things are going pretty well if we take a look at the overall battlefield. Definitely can't, can't complain whatsoever. Just some cool bits of uh, the fighting right here. Always, you know, it's always nice to go cinematic mode, even in games as old as this, because, you know, it, does, it really does not look like it's, you know, a seven, eight-year-old mod. You've got a fire arrows going over as well, burning a few of the enemies. That's kind of cool that you have special abilities with certain heroes with the arrow fire. Seems like though our army is just, you know, superior in number. They're going to get a nice little charge off here with some, you know, pretty heavy cavalry. I know that uh, Southside isn't exactly a great warrior, but I mean, he'll hold his own against these guys. Let's throw him in. He'll get his bodyguard in and he'll charge in, leading the men from the front, which is what we always like to see. And nice. Killing half of the, the enemy army is always going to be good. I mean, the infantry is going to get, you know, thrown away. You can see Lu Bu is actually running away from combat. Something you see too often. Uh, we've also got our archers over here as well, just pounding away on their formation, hitting away these light spearmen. I want to chase Lu Bu down, though, try and get him killed. And we can actually see him in combat. I mean, all of our archer fire has been focusing him for some while, which is, you know, kind of cowardly. But hey, we're a ruthless warlord. We've got to do what we got to do. And you can see him right there fighting in the combat, even though after... Oh, I'm killing a lot of my own men here as well. Uh, maybe we should stop there now that we've got Lu Bu this low. Nice. We have slain the enemy general. This one's mighty warrior is no more. I also noticed as we did start to tie through our abilities, we have another one called the Art of Deception. I don't really know what exactly it does because it didn't tell me, but we'll pop it anyway. Maybe we, like, appear differently to them or something. That'd be kind of a cool way of approaching it. But it seems like the battle is, is very much won now at this point. We just need to kind of finish off these more elite units by rear charging them. And, you know, they're even eager right now just because of the... Uh, because of the sheer quality of them. But the overall battlefield is now over. Our archers are having a pretty good time at killing them off. And, you know, we have a few of the heavy elite infantry. But that's kind of more of the pitch battles. And I think that's pretty goddamn awesome. For a pitch battle, you know, that was very exciting. We had special abilities going off. We had heavy elite units. I mean, what more do you want? So I feel like as we are, we will be quite ruthless. But, I mean, money does also talk. So let's go and just ransom the prisoners. They rejected. That's fine with me. We will cut down their soldiers and, and move move on. Um, unfortunately, in Medieval 2, uh, you don't actually replenish your units out in the field or in friendly territories. So you actually just have to send them back to cities to retrain, which is a nice, interesting way of doing it. Um, you obviously also get bonuses for you know, doing certain stuff. We have we achieved certain feats, which gone ahead and gave us more morale. I mean, beating Lubu in battle is always a impressive thing to do. And you can see our relationships worsen as well. So it's just stuff like this where characters are getting you know abilities and stuff as they continue on. Kind of just adds a nice little feel to the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump ahead a couple of turns and show you guys one of these awesome siege battles that they have in the game. So before we do jump into the actual past battle, we have a really, really cool event popping up, you know, telling us about the Emperor and trying to control him and, you know, put our, you know, our power on top, which was just kind of a nice event. And you'll get loads of these events throughout the campaign, which I think, again, just adding that nice flavor. It gives you a story alongside the extra missions you get as these important characters. So we're going to jump in and so I can show you guys off these, these cool past battles because I think it's for siege battles which really make it shine. I mean, I I guess there is so much to this mod it's hard to say that the siege battles actually do make the, the mod shine because you have you know awesome characters you have the old medieval 2 style of combat you have um really cool land battles great heroes custom models amazing missions and scripts and events there's so much and if i haven't convinced you to play this mod already i don't really know what more i can have so yeah this is one of the really cool fort battles i mean just look at this right now for those of you who have maybe never played medieval 2 this is what the glory days used to be like the siege battles you know this is just a, a single pass battle to protect this mountain pass but imagine you know what the, the the actual other settlements are and i won't show you guys all the other siege maps because there are loads but it's just stuff like this which just uh, just amazing this is one of the reasons i fell in love with total war because you have you know the, the camps to kind of makes it feel like this is actually where soldiers are camping out you have the inner quarters you have these towers and stuff to assault and the defenders will obviously keep their way but you also have you know defenders advantage we have a moat around here which will slow up our advancement it's just really really cool stuff and we'll play a little bit of this just so you guys can see 
I have a few generals back here as well and we can see their custom models i believe these guys will all have custom models yeah there you go we have cal ren right there i actually know cal ren um you know i'm not as i said fully knowledgeable about the three kingdoms i'm learning as i go and as we get closer to the release of actual three kingdoms so i don't sound like an absolute idiot but cal ren is is someone who does ring a bell in my head um and zhao yun also my pronunciation is gonna need to have a lot of work done in it so i think what we can do is just send up the ladders first i'm sure this infantry will be enough to uh to storm it and we'll also blockade the position right there with a few archers we have as well they'll harass the enemy formation So not only are these awesome, you know, settlement map battles exciting to fight on, they're unique, they also provide you a really strategic position on the campaign map. You know, it's going to be very hard for the enemies to take positions like this, especially with the way the Medieval 2 combat works, you know. Weight of numbers really pays a difference. So if you stick a full stack in this garrison, it's going to be very hard for the enemy to break through your formation just because you've got these great arrow towers to shoot down on the enemy. You can quickly and quite easily smash through your position, and they just have to attack you through one way you know i don't think they can actually visit oh they can go all the way around the pass itself to take this choke point but you know it's a lot of effort to do so and you know i feel like against the ai it's very very easy to hold these positions so it's great to see that as you know the infantry just just climb over so i think this is going to be it for the video just kind of leaving you on this awesome note of you know the siege maps are so exciting and so much fun and again i really hope you know we haven't seen too much about the siege battles we saw one siege battle gameplay from three kingdoms so i really hope we get stuff like this because it just adds so much flavor to the battlefield having unique settlements like this and i guess if we don't we can always rely on modders as well to add them in if they get good tools because you know having battles like this in in, in the, the era of the three kingdoms would just be so much fun so make sure you go and play this mod it's so epic i'm probably gonna be streaming it over the next couple of days and if you guys want to see me trying to complete certain challenges with this mod then let me know in the comments down below or even just some online battles you know if you guys want to see online battles using these awesome maps then do let me know in the comments down below um drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it if you've played this mod let me know what you think of it and i'll see you guys in the next one